Okay, so Hall & Oates with uh, Sarah Smile. It's just a great song, you know, probably my favorite Hall & Oates songs. And they had a lot of great songs, really, really good songwriters. But I think this one kind of sums up where they were coming from, that Philadelphia soul sound. Um, just really like this song. And the musicianship on this song is really, really outstanding, too. Uh, when I did the demo, I um, played the bass on it, and so I had to learn the bass part. And that was played by a guy called Lee Sklar, Leland Sklar. I think he's mostly known as Lee Sklar. And he's uh, like a session guy who's played on thousands of records. Um, and one of his best performances, well, that I know of, because I don't know all this stuff, is um, Jackson Brown, Doctor My Eyes. If you ever listen to just the bass on that, it's just awesome. The guy is really, really good player. Anyways, he played bass on this. And uh, if you really listen to the bass lines on this song, they really, really make the song. So as far as the guitar goes on this song, now I got a request to do this from somebody. And uh, I've always wanted to do this song, so it was a sort of a good, uh, good inspiration to do it. Um, but there's really very little guitar. So what I did in the demo is I tried to cop the keyboard parts. So I did like a guitar faking a keyboard in the left channel, a guitar faking a keyboard in the right channel. Uh, the left one was kind of low, the right one was high, you know? Because the guitar is just basically going... in the intro you know and then in in the uh the verses it's just you know there's no delay on the guitar of course but he's just slashing but let's go over the chords it's in d minor basically d minor seven because you actually never play a full d minor and i see this uh a lot of guys play this and um i don't know the chords just aren't right and if you don't get these chords right, you know, the chords, the chord changes of the song are so cool. And you got to get them, you know, to get that sound. So it starts out with a D minor 7. Then we go to an A minor 7. And you can play with the open A or you can fret it here on the 5th fret on the E string. And then we got a G minor 7. You can also play it that way too, right? And the opening is just... just holds there and the bass kind of changes to from the G to the C but if you're playing this on your own you'd probably want to go so from that G minor 7 you want to go to this chord which is a B flat with a C bass like you know, B flat right those three but over a C bass and then we do it again and we do this lick right just That's a keyboard, right? And you can just fake it, you know, you finger pick it or you could with a pick, right? And if you're playing this by yourself, you can uh, throw the bass line in that section too. So uh, like this. And then the keyboard part. Right? So that bass line is just, when we hit that G major or minor 7, we're just going to go, right, just E3, open A, A1, E3, while we're holding that chord, right? So... From the keyboard part... So if you're not in a band situation, that's going to you know, fill it out nicely, right? And then we get into the verses, all right? Now the verses... The first chord is this D minor 7, and you can play it there, or you could play it here, right? And on my right channel, my higher one, 
I was trying to cop the same voicings as the keyboard and I wanted to play it up there, okay? So, but for this, let's play it here. And let's play the whole chord. Let's include the bass note. That's your first chord. Now the second chord, I see a lot of guys just, just do that. Right? They just drop the bass or they'll go, they'll just play a C. But the whole magic of this chord is that it's an A minor over a C bass. We have to have that E note in there. Okay, that is the secret of this chord. So you want to drop that bass, but you got to take your finger off. And that's the chord, right? You know you can go. Right, that's just such an awesome chord. So it's an A minor with C bass, and if you're playing it down here, going to do it that way, right? So you just got your A minor and you put your C bass on there. And that, to me, that's like the whole magic of that song is that second chord. Now the third chord is this B flat major 7. We don't need to play that high note there. You could if you wanted. But just that, that one there. The D. Uh, note on um, B3 and in the demo again on the right channel I did the D minor 7 like that actually that'd be more like a D D minor right but I could have just played it like that and then the C or the A minor over C like think right that's D minor right A minor and then you just add the C and if you were just playing a C, it's like a C6, right? And then the B flat major 7, I just did there. And then on the lower part, got to have that, keep that note, right? And then we go to this chord, which is a G over an A bass. And then we slide that up to an A. And a lot of guys will go, just like an A sus suspended, A7 sus, to an A7. And that'll work, that'll work. But what I'm hearing is definitely that. And up top, what I did there is a... that's what I heard up there which is which is that a sus to an a right? so that's the bulk of the verse uh, then it repeats now we get into like the bridge or the connector or whatever you want to call it pre-chorus and we're gonna go B flat C, and those are on the on beat the first time, okay, which is important. Two, three, two, two, three, four, and then we're going to go to the C sharp diminished chord. And you know, a lot of you guys are, well, a lot of us guys, because I'm really not used to playing that chord, I hardly ever play it, right? Normally, when I play it diminished, I play it that shape that most guys are probably more familiar with, but this shape here would be. Um, uh, well, you want the C sharp in it, which is the A4, D5, and then G3, and E5, right? So, one, two, three, four, one, two, and then we're offbeat on the D minor 7. Now we do it again, but we're going to go offbeat on that C. So on, off, and then on this chord here, which is uh, a D sharp 7. And you kind of want to end it on that B, B string. Although that won't kill you if you play that, but 
Uh, the keyboard voicings kind of sound more like there, you know. Because the first time we're doing that one, second time that one, and then back to the D minor 7. So that whole middle section is... G minor 7 and those are all on beats so it's really important that you figure out which is on and which is off in that section and then it's just the chorus which is like the intro except the keyboards do some really cool things there. so uh, the one the left channel goes And the guitar actually hits that chord too. And that is really important to get that because a lot of guys will want to do that chord there, the C sharp diminished, or just the C. But that is this here C sharp, seven, nine, add nine. And that's, a, you know, that's a key chord, right? If you get that chord wrong, it's like something just doesn't sound right. So. And that, it's just. That's the first time, second time. And then repeat. And the uh, part in the right channel does a little bit different there. The keyboard is more like this. It hits like that octave C note. So. And then also does that chord. second time just holds that just kind of hits that octave before it repeats that whole section again so that's pretty well it for the keyboard parts slash guitar parts right um, and the only other part is that sort of I guess this would be the bridge where the the bass goes And the chords there, that break part, are like, it's like G minor 7 to C, F to B flat, and then your C sharp diminished again. In the demo, I didn't bother using the bass notes, I just went... So, you kind of kind of adding, you know, just, it's like a melodic thing, right, where you just go, and then, you're back to that, right, and the upper part I did, I just, you know, different voicings was... C, B flat, C, F, C sharp diminished in that position, and then back to this. So, you know, you can choose whatever one you want to do there, or maybe you don't want to do either. Maybe you just want to go... Regardless, you know, just really, really, really great musicianship in this song. Really smart, and it just, you know, there's obviously some very experienced guys playing these parts. So now let's go over the beginning. 
the, the little solo, and I'll just turn off my effects because that's a really dry guitar there. I think there might be a little bit of reverb on it. It starts like this. We're in this. It's, you know, F uh, major pentatonic, same as D minor. Right? So we're going to start out with this. That's the uh, 13th fret in the B string. And then the 12th on the G. So da, da. Then G10, D12. And then that's a bend on uh, B11. So. And get your first finger in there for support, right? And then we're going to come up here. And that, when I played it, I just held on to that one. But listening to it again, I kind of noticed that he lets go of it. So he goes. So. Now we're going to go. And then we're going to go. Right? Just going to pull that note. Then we're going to go. So actually a bit of a slide into that. So D12, G10, B11. And slide up to here. Uh, G14, um, B13. Then we go no slide. So B15 to uh, 13 on the E slide up to 17th on the E. And that's it for the solo. Now at the end, I just kind of jammed uh, a bit of a solo just to fill it out a bit there. And I'm not really going to go over that because that's more just a jamming situation. You know, if you're in a band, there's a great chords to jam over. You know, there's not a lot of guitar in it. It's almost all keyboards, but um, hopefully this will help you uh, to understand what's going on. Anyways, that's it. Hope you get something out of it, and we'll talk to you next time.